Welcome to Hacks Be Shared. This video discusses options for electrical supply of three phase. As we all know, electricity is dangerous. Nothing in this video should be taken as instruction or training. Installation standards and voltages may be different where you live. So if in doubt, consult a competent person. Thank you. Welcome to Hacks Be Shared. I'd like to tell you how I installed inverter variable frequency drives on my lathe and on my shaper. If you don't have a three phase supply at your property then basically you have three options. The first is to use an inverter variable frequency drive as I'm showing here. The second option is to use a rotary converter shown here and the third option is to use a static converter shown here. You can see that I've invested heavily in production facilities for this video but I thought it was better than just talking to a still shot on a computer screen. Each of these options has pros and cons. The rotary converter will create the closest to true three phase. But it's more expensive than the other options. You can see the motor generator there, so it can be noisy. It doesn't include any speed control. But it is useful if you need the closest to true three phase and if you're running say a workshop with many machines. The static converter is very much a compromise. It will run multiple machines at once but the performance is reduced and it's very important to match the output of the static converter to the load and that's done with the knobs on the front there. It is possible to fry your motor using one of these so it needs to be considered carefully whether this is the right device for you but there are definitely occasions when it's the right compromise. And that brings us to discuss the inverter variable frequency drive. And this is what I fitted to my machines. And like all solutions, there are advantages and disadvantages. With this device, it's possible to control the speed of your machine. The speed and output of the motor is controlled by the frequency and shape of the output waveform. The wave shape and balance is close to true three phase. It's possible to operate these from a remote control, either connected by a physical cable or if you have the right equipment controlled over a bus, a computer bus. They very cleverly include a level of torque control such that if you run the motor slower it doesn't reduce the torque. It's possible to run motors at theoretically any frequency which means faster than the design speed but clearly there are limits to that and for smaller motors these inverters are now relatively cheap. This is the inverter for my shaper. It just sits underneath the shaper in the base. The inverter heatsink can get quite hot so it's screwed down with spacers onto a sheet of cement board. The display has a number of functions but one of them is to show the output frequency and as I adjust the frequency you can see how it moves up here 
to 50 Hz, but the range of adjustment depends on how the parameters are set. I've used screen cable to the motor and also I've used screen cable going to the emergency stop switch. So this cable here is going across within the casing to this emergency stop here. For my lathe I've installed the inverter in the base behind this cover and I've kept the forward and reverse switch in operation. The start and stop buttons are not in use because I've remoted that function to this controller. So start, stop, speed, but I've also installed a small display which shows when running the speed in RPM of the lathe. Excuse the flashing, that's just how the display refreshes. If I turn up the speed, RPM. The RPM display is picked up from this sensor, a Hall effect sensor, and I've fastened a magnet onto the spindle, and as it flies round, the pulses are counted by this sensor. So looking at all three options, I should say about the rotary converter and the static converter, they're pretty much plug and go. In other words, you can take your connector, plug it straight in, maybe with the static converter a little bit of adjustment for the motor load, but basically um, that's it. You're, you're up and running. In the case of the inverter VFD, you have to set the parameters. You can see that it isn't possible to, there isn't a big plug on it, so you can't just plug straight in like that. There's a bit of rewiring to do. But perhaps the most significant point is that the output of the first two will be uh, three phase voltage, which in, in the UK is about 415 volts. But the output of the inverter VFD maximum voltage is 240 volts in the UK so whatever your equivalent is wherever you live and this means that the three-phase motor has to be wired for low voltage or delta rather than star configuration now it may be your motors wired that way already but probably not you'll probably have to change the connections within the motor terminal box to make it low voltage delta. This is the motor plate for my shaper and you can see the currents and voltages shown for star and mesh. Mesh is an alternative word for delta. And here is the motor plate from my lathe showing the corresponding values. A three-phase motor has three windings. The diagram on the left shows star, the diagram on the right shows delta. The difference is the way in which the windings are connected together. The individual windings within the motor terminate on a connector plate or a connector block. This is the connector plate on my shaper motor. You can see the terminals are labelled A, B, C, and N. But yours may be labelled X, Y, Z and N or U, V, W and N. One end of all three windings is terminated on the N terminal post which tells you that the motor is wired in star. So to use this motor with an inverter I've had to reconfigure the connections in delta. This was my lathe motor terminal box 
as it arrived and you can see that it was quite badly smashed up. But nevertheless, you can see that the end of each winding terminates on the end post, showing that the motor was wired as star. Modern motors usually come with this type of terminal block and by using straps it's possible to quickly convert the motor from star to delta or vice versa just by changing the direction of the straps and so I took the opportunity to fit one of these. For my lathe I bought the inverter and control box complete. But by the time I wanted to install the inverter on my shaper, I had a lot more confidence and so I bought an inverter second hand from eBay. I haggled and paid a little bit less than this. Also I bought the components and wired up the remote control myself, saving quite a bit of money that way. The black box is my old static converter which was running the shaper and the blue box is the new inverter. The difference in size is quite amazing. That concludes the video which I hope you found useful. Thank you for watching Hacksby Shed.